Hey. Hey. Hello. I got a sip. What up? Tide pods to everyone. Tide pods for all. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond the Basement, the complete Attack, Attack on, on Titan, Titan podcast. podcast. How did you know I was going to say that? I, I mean, you know. ESPN. <laughs> wow, you got to yell that out. Oh, wow. ESPN, Disney, Hulu. No. Subscription. Um, I'm Rachel. I'm Eric. I'm Peter. Welcome to episode 25, the final episode, the banger of the season one. Of, of season one. Stuck it out. And uh, congratulations, you made it this far. Final if you listen to every single podcast, here's what I want you to God do. God bless you. I want you to. We love you. I want you to, A, feel good about yourself because you made it through a lot of content. And B, I want you to go to iTunes if you have not already and leave this podcast a five star review. Because if you're 25 episodes deep, you must like you us. You must like it, okay? I'm just saying. Just throwing that out there. It's you, at least bearable. <laughs> you can bear that we are all flaming nerds. Okay. All, all right. right. So let's do a quick recap. Um, episode 25 here. This is this is the final battle, the final countdown. Uh, yes. It starts out with the uh, the weird religion wall people, wall cult people, and having a little surface, and then a giant titan butt cr- comes in and crushes everyone, um, which starts off the fight between... Uh, Aaron and the female Titan, who we now know to be Annie. And so they get into it, start blowing the place up, and as they do, we kind of get these flashbacks to Annie's past, or what we assume is her past, because it's like... She's her, a child. Yeah, she's a child. It's like her imagination. So we're going to kind of cover some of that, because it happens at multiple times throughout the episode. Mm-hmm. Then, um, a really brutal fight where Aaron <laughs> loses most of his limbs and sues. Annie goes to climb the wall to like, run away, and as she does, Aaron actually gets gets to her. She loses she, some limbs too. She loses some limbs. Um, Mikasa runs in, sit, cuts off her fingers, saves the day. Right as Aaron has her kind of on fully on the ropes, he goes to like eat her, which is weird, out of the nape of the neck, and then hesitates. And at that point, and he turns into a crystal, an impenetrable Titan type crystal thing. Uh, which kind of foils the whole plan, basically, yeah. or uh, so it seems. Yeah. And we spend the rest of the episode kind of dealing with the fallout of all this. So Erwin kind of gets called to account. Um, Aaron is sort of like recovering, and we kind of get this like, you know, good like final moment. They kind of wrap everything up. We kind of see the final couple shots. Or Aaron has a key. You see the key to the basement, so you know okay, there's more to come. You. And Erwin declares, Commander Erwin declares that there is. Uh, they're the ones now in the hunt. Now that, you know, one of these spies has been captured, we think that there's more. We're going to try and figure out what the heck's going on. So, um, if you watched, if you're a good Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe watcher, you would know to watch until the end of the credits. <laughs> yeah. Because there is a final, there's a final, final, there's an after the credits roll scene mm-hmm. where we kind of, the camera sort of goes into the wall where Annie was crawling up and like beat it all up and it sort of zooms in and zooms in again and zooms in again to get pretty dang close and a little bit of this wall it crumbles and there is a half of a muscly looking titan face inside the wall. So I hope I didn't just surprise you by telling you that. Dun, dun, dun. I hope you watched that. Part. I love that Erwin's like, we we have titans within our walls right before they show that. And like There's there's literally, literally yeah. titans. Well, a figuratively titan in the wall. And literally. So... That's kind of the gist of this episode, if it's been a minute since you watched it. Um, so let's jump into it here. I do kind of want to talk about the, maybe without calling too much attention to it, but just know that it's a semi-important thing for season two, is um, the first scene with like the wall cult people. Mm-hmm. So they like worship the walls, and they're kind of saying a bunch of weird stuff and talking yeah. about their like their devotion to the walls and their devotion and their like how they're sacred and yeah they that, must not be spoiled they say the walls of light were born from the divine right yeah, yeah most of us just build our walls yeah right here, typically uh just, they're born from bricks a little bit of brick a little bit of mud not you know. walls of light what uh, does that even mean god bricks. god didn't build this wall so i'm calling attention to this because <laughs> it's weird Yes. I'm also calling attention to this because like as, so- as soon as you get to the first episode of season two, you realize that this becomes like, there's something to this. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, what's his name? Pastor Nick, who we've pointed out before. He was in the courtroom mm-hmm. when Aaron, we've seen him twice, right? Courtroom and then one other episode. He doesn't have a lot of lines, but nonetheless, he's clearly this like religious leader. Anyway, so he like survives and a bunch of these people are just like, 
sprawled out dead. And like I think the whole point of this like quick clip is like the irony of like the walls will protect us and then boom like Titan butt and then Annie like yeah. looks down at her hand and she's crushed like seven different people and there's yeah. like half broken bodies under her hand and she's like, Ugh yeah, they, humans. They believed in a false safety, I think. So the they idea. never expected nobody expected the Titans. Not just inside the walls, but inside wall Cena, yeah. right? And they're the not even one in. inside inside they're in an alcove, but still mm-hmm. That's a big deal. No one saw that coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we got to say, like, for all the cults that I've seen in my life, this one is certainly the most well-funded. Like, they've mm-hmm. got a nice building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't the know Branch they, Davidians would be jealous, dude. I just, yeah. I don't know if they have got a Kickstarter up or <laughs> so, I don't you know, crypto, know. but all oh. the cults that I've started fizzle out within just a few days, three oh. to four years. Oh, yeah. A oh, okay. couple, years, you know, batches of Kool-Aid. Longevity. It's mostly pe- me and my pool in my, my backyard. Yeah. Oh. But. Sounds like an okay cult. I would consider it. Yeah. Saturday nights, if you guys are interested. Um, <laughs> so, Sunday nights, real. he does the podcast. Saturday nights, he does his cult. It's, wall, it's yeah, it's not so, wall cult. It's a so floor, the pastor, floor cult. <laughs> the pastor Floring guy, cult. Pastor Nick exclaims, because it's funny, because like he, the walls have not, they failed to protect him right there in his congregation right there. And then he sees uh, both Aaron and Annie running towards the next nearest wall. And he's like, no, the walls, stay away from the walls. Like, he still has this weird attachment to them, even though they failed to do what, seemingly failed to do what they were supposed to do. Yeah. It's just, again, there's some, like, irony it's buried in there. very interesting. Annie does look like she's running straight for the wall. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't want anything to do with Aaron, it appears. She's, r- like, freaked out and running away from he him. he just landed, like, a hardcore hook of justice that all of us were begging so for. So satisfying. He got the, the, the haymaker. What was the wrestling game that's super popular in 64 where you could just give the giant? Yeah, it, was, um, it was GameCube, and it was Def the, Jam. Def Jam. Land yeah, Def Jam. I never remember that. haymaker. Just... <laughs> from across the map. And that was <laughs> what happened here. Yeah, so this time, though, the difference between, you know, Aaron in the woods and Aaron fighting now because we know that he can't be any she just pieced him up like he was using all of his strength right and all of his rage and she was like yeah i got technique and i can harden my limbs so mm-hmm. i got weapons i can special bring. powers it's kind of not fair but anyway she's got a lot of technique and she just you know kicks his head right off right so this time aaron's like i gotta be a hundred percent in control i gotta come up with some good ability to use my strength to my advantage and he runs in first thing he goes, you know, and he has his internal dialogue, Annie, you know, and you're like, yeah, it's cool. And he, uh, he goes to throw this like crazy powerful punch. She throws up her arm to block and she hardens her whole elbow, which like. It's a weird deal, but shatters effective. his block. And then she goes to return a kick, but it looked like Aaron was baiting the kick. She goes yeah. to the kick. He catches the kick at the risk of his own ribs, throws her like over a building into another building. And you're like, oh, that was pretty cool. Then he like Terminator style, like marches <laughs> through another building. I'm like, Aaron, you re- you could have just jumped. Yeah. Man, I, mean, you, I mean, you do you. If you're, I, anytime I'm beaten, you know, a Titan into oblivion, I, run I do crazy the things too. But somebody has got to he put together. He was like the Kool Aid Man. Just <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. Look, like somebody needs to put together a GIF. Oh yeah. Of <laughs> the Kool Aid Man <laughs> superimposed on like Aaron yeah. like running through the wall. So they there's some important dialogue right now during this whole sequence of action. And one of it is um, Hanjay, and I think it's Armin, and they say um, he hasn't won yet against the female Titan, but he won't lose so easily this time. Spirit alone can't win the fight. It's Jean and Armin that are talking. Jean and Armin, thank you. Because Mikasa and Hanjay talk about how Aaron has more control this time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then uh, he says, um, surpassing a- Annie will require more than just spirit alone. So... Yeah, we kind of skipped over this. Well, Aaron, they do mention Aaron shouting his dialogue. We're gonna go to that. No, the well, yeah, the part where she heads for level ground. I mean, this is a small detail, oh, but right. well, she like does. Big... She does that after he throws her over the building, doesn't she? I think so. I think yeah. Be right. So we haven't gotten to that yet. I also think it's interesting that Aaron's hands started steaming before he punched, tried to punch her. Like he was. <laughs> yeah, you gotta wonder, can he? Yeah, there's heal? like steam coming himself? out of him. He's just like so full of fire and wonder. like strength that he's just steaming already. We really we'll, we'll get to his yet. we'll get to his final form here in a second because I do kind of yeah, wonder what that's kind of interesting. He looks interesting while it's happening. Yes. So all right, so they head to the level ground for the fair fight. Um, yeah. At first, Sorry, it just looks this. like she's running for her life. Like she's just running to, to the, well, she's going to level ground because she doesn't. But want then to fight. they they realize the scouts 
realize that she's going somewhere on purpose. Yeah. Basically, they can't use the ODM gear there, uh, in that area nearly as effectively. It's kind of like when they were out in the plains uh, on the expedition. They're kind yeah. of vulnerable. They can't do as much. Any of the tactician is still thinking. Aaron is just following her blindly in a rage. You like, want to jump to Aaron's dialogue? Aaron um, says, sure. Yeah. Aaron, yeah. in his mind, is like, you know, dialoguing Annie. You never seemed interested, or you didn't ever seem to care about anything. It all just seemed like whatever type deal. All throughout what we've seen, all of her interactions with Annie, she never cared about anything, right? Very stoic. She's, yeah, very detached. You pretended that it didn't matter, right? What are you fighting for, and what did, what caused you to murder your own people? And uh, even we can go back to, like, the whole when they were training with Reiner and, and Annie was there, they're doing the physical combat, mm-hmm. and he learns from Annie the, the little like leg trip move that yeah. she taught him. And it's like, wait a second, clearly you were way better than anybody else mm-hmm. at combat. She was the best. Clearly, even just a little m- couple moves, you were able to wreck anybody. And Aaron used that to become like the number one person in combat. Mm. So she even pretended like that didn't matter. Obviously, it did. Yeah. Obviously, she's yeah. super good at it. And obviously, she was playing down her abilities to hide her identity. He talks about how she came alive when she was showing off her martial arts skills. Yeah. And yeah, I, I wish that she could hear him, but of course, she can't. I know. It's like this internal dialogue that we're hearing, which is very useful, but I wish there was a way to Titan speak from yeah. one to the yeah. other. We yeah. could just get like a, a couple cups and some string and uh-huh. just like, hey, work. Annie. You're dumb, and I. Or hate they you, could do you know? something other than just scream and rage at each <laughs> other. They could like use their voices to talk. Yeah. Um, while the, the crazy fight is happening, there's all these people getting killed. All these buildings all over the place. The there's there's filled like filled with people. Yeah. Are you talking about the MP? Are we gonna cut to the MPs? Yeah. Because yeah. in the beginning, well, that's what happens when the first Titan kicks the walls open. Right. Mm-hmm. All the people freak out, start to flee. They're evacuating everybody. Yeah. The garrison who's there. Don't literally don't do anything. Like now, yeah. except for uh uh Hanez, right? Like he does save yeah. Aaron and Mikasa there. So good on him. But I mean they aren't like flying around with ODM gear in like full defense mode like you but, think they would be. Yeah, right. but I'm just saying that everybody is running away from Shiganshina to go into the wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're in the wall already. These people have nowhere to go. Yeah. The yeah. Titans are here and nobody ever expected them to be inside. While Cena, mm-hmm. where do they run to? They're just getting killed like cattle. So, pretty crazy. We we flip to the MPs and they're like... They're just like, crapping their pants. Uh, they just don't know what to do. No they, one ever said anything about... They've never even seen a Titan. Is that what a Titan here? looks yeah. like? And why are they fighting? And it's like, hey, you guys, where have you been the last... <laughs> Why are they fighting here? Well, I mean, that's not a bad question. Why are the, yeah. why are the Titans fighting each other and why are they fighting here? Like. Yeah. That's fair. But and these are the questions that you only ask. They're completely in the dark about all of that. If you're the Kush, like, never seen combat, like, yeah. you just, you're soft. Like, you don't even know. You're not a scout. Like, you've never you're seen real battle. Link. That's why you would ask these things. You haven't even read about any of this stuff. Now you're seeing it for the first time in person. They don't know what the frick to do. So they sit Is around. Is this a danger? I've read about this before. Oh. Oh. Accelerating. <laughs> that scene in the picture. She's like, ooh, fireworks. Yeah, it's like exactly. a ship exploding. <laughs> exactly. She just doesn't know what she's looking at. So then... um. The whole commander guy. Um, I forget weasel, his name. Weasel guy. I forget his name. We wrote the head it. of the We should have MPs. written it down, Dan. Yeah, the head of the MPs. I just, anyway, I, I knew it last time. He's yelling it at Irwin. Is this your doing? How yeah. is this a victory for humanity? Well, he asked him, yeah, is this your doing? And it's like, Aaron's like, Irwin's like, yeah, I made Titans attack. I made people turn into Titans and come and attack <laughs> us. In uh, Yeah, I invented all of this. This is all this is my all doing. all my plan. But he's saying, like, did you somehow have a hand in this? And Erwin just stoically like, yep, that was me. Yeah. And uh, he's like, why? All these people are dying all these lives, right? And what does Erwin say? I can't. I'm sorry. For humankind. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for human, yeah. And, uh, and the guy's like, oh, it's bull, you know, like. Yeah, it's just a fancy line for you made humanity's up victory. For yeah, humanity. well, that's when he freaking pulls the gun on him. He's like, "Listen, I can execute you right, execute you right now. None of the brass would care. Like, none of the top leaders would give a you know a crap about whether or not I killed you right now because you're dirty, like traitor, basically." Which is exactly just 
It goes to show how the MPs work. Like, yeah. <laughs> how many times have you just shot somebody? And be like, oh, the brass won't care. You know, like <laughs> he fell on some bullets. You know, yeah. like, it's the worst. He fell very quickly onto some lead. There's some workplace accidents. OSHA's got to be all up in there. Okay, yeah, but but Irwin basically. I love the way he responds. Yeah, his response is everything. His response is, I feel like this is this is a moment. Like you you get a lot of a good feel for for Irwin up to this point. Like he's got this kind of leadership capabilities and strategy and so on and so or, so forth. But he also has virtue, right? He has a moral integrity that is top notch. Mm-hmm. He has the not only that, but he's also able to articulate it in extremely concise ways. And he goes. Okay, I don't mind, but that will leave you in charge. Okay, so what I want you to do is, um, after you kill me, you need to take command of the of the wait, scouts, wait, and you make wait, sure you capture wait. Annie. And, and this then, is who's in charge. Yeah, so and so's in charge of like yeah. the supplies. So and so in charge of like the whatever. And he's like giving him all the details. Like, and he's like, "Whoa, stop, 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 stop!" He yeah. freaks out. And those he freaks out. What's his name with the gun at him? Freaks out because those are the words of somebody. Is it Niles? Niles? Maybe. Niles? Miles? Maybe. Maybe. Like Maybe Niall. Miles Davis. Niles. Niles. I don't know something Niall, like that. Yeah. But. Irwin's words are the ones of like somebody who's f- like, okay, well, so long as the mission gets done, that's somebody who's committed to the cause yeah. and who actually believes in it. And it's like, mm-hmm. I here's the thing is, I think Irwin has maybe above others already committed himself like to the cause, but to death to for die. the sake yeah. of the cause, mm-hmm. which I think yeah. only a handful of people in all of humanity have, have done, but there's this like inner commitment saying like, I know this will probably take my life one day. That's already baked into the cake. And if that's today, then so be it basically. It, it so kinda, long as the cause goes forth. It kind of reminds me of Armin and how, when he's asked, you know, would you die if someone told you to, he says, if I understood the reason why and I knew what it was for and it was for a good reason, yes. Mm, yeah. It also reminds me of when he was standing between all the, the, the cannon and all the guns and Aaron and Mikasa and he was like, even if you kill me, this is a true salute. It's like kind of the same yeah. heart. I think uh, I think we watched this switch flip in Irwin mm-hmm. in the woods. Yes. And when he saw what Annie was willing to sacrifice yeah. to accomplish her, his, her mission, he says, you know, if she's willing to be that desperate to accomplish her mission, I've got to be even more so. Like we he's can't play this yeah. half in, half out. We got to go all in with this. Mm-hmm. And he's saying, okay, my life, like being a scout, your life's already pretty committed to the cause. Yeah. But he sees the lengths, which you have to do in order to ensure humanity's victory. And he's like, my life is not that important. I will willingly lay my life down for this cause. And that's something that the cushy MPs have no business understanding. It's like and not even it. in their universe. Uh-huh. I don't yeah, even like, think they know what, what that kind of... You'll be inconvenienced for this? Oh, uh, what do we do? They've only been looking out for themselves, you know what I mean? That's That mm-hmm. was that was why they joined the MPs in the first place, is they were looking out for number one. They're yeah. like, how yeah. can I get like, the cush What's job, the, the good life? Job that will be beneficial to me? And so, yeah, you don't know anything about sacrifice. You don't know anything. It's interesting how this works. Because this is, I feel like that's how it is in real life too. People who don't know what it's like to actually live for somebody and something greater than themselves can't recognize it yeah. when it's in front of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They 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 actually see selflessness as selfishness, right? That's his accusation here. He's like, you brought this, you brought these, you know, is this part of your plan the whole time? Like, yeah. you're destroying the city. And he's like, nope, this is actually part of a much bigger plan. Like, the, And so in, in this case, he kind of actually gets the sentiment. He's like, wait, maybe Irwin is right. Maybe this is part of something bigger than Irwin then whether or not Irwin did something right or wrong, maybe he's actually like really believes that this is, you know, for something greater, for something bigger. And yeah. like most people will never belong, like, you know, a great war, like at least in our generation, right? It always comes back to fight club, dang dude. <laughs> there, you know, there is no, our generation has no great war. Our, our generation has no great depression. The great war is wait, spiritual was, war. It's a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. It's our lives. That line is just like so perfect because in our world now, we can sit down and listen to podcasts about anime all the time instead of, you know, fighting for survival or fighting like an actual like war for survival and fighting for your family. Like there's just the odds that we face right now, like we don't, there's not a movement for most people to like join. There's not like a cause. There's not an actual cause where you would actually lay down your life. Like you could, there's plenty of political causes online, of course. There's plenty of people who be like, oh yeah, hashtag join the movement, you know, tweet about this. <laughs> Tweeting about something it's and strapping on a, a weapon to go into a battle. This is two totally different things. And so it's like, for us, we don't really like understand it. And so in this universe, in the Attack on Titan universe, it's similar in that 100 years of safety. Yeah. There's been nothing. There's been nothing to worry about. And so it's kind of hard to recognize 
an emergency, even though it's at your front doorstep. And it's even harder to recognize that there's somebody who like, it, it's harder for the heart to connect with somebody who's already committed to a cause and is like all in. And you, you look at Irwin's behavior, you know, and you don't understand it. Cause you're like, he's miles ahead of yeah. where the other guy's at. Yeah. But it's because Irwin's heart, his soul is in the right place. Like that. He's like fighting for something more than himself. Yeah. And that kind of conviction, it like shakes everybody else. Right. He's mm-hmm. totally willing to lay his life down for his beliefs. And it, that's not, not something Niall is like familiar with at all, especially that, that burden of responsibility where the stuff you do actually matters, mm-hmm. where if you do this, if you screw this thing up and the, the female Titan gets away, all is lost, right? All his people died for nothing. He's like, I don't want that kind of responsibility. Uh, Irwin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. After this, you're going to totally be submitted to it. Yeah, you'll face the law, is yeah. what he says. And Irwin's like, cool, bro. I've seen Titans face to face. The law ain't... I'm not worried about that at all, right? Yeah. <laughs> After this is over. Okay, but right now, you need to get these men out. And he starts immediately like taking charge and leading, which is why we love him. Yeah. And then it goes back to Armin, Armin and John. And mm-hmm. Armin says, those who can't abandon anything can't change anything. Mm-hmm. And it's exactly what Erwin is doing. He's like willing to lay his life down to cause humanity's victory. Yeah. And so, yeah, Armin's line that he repeats a couple of times in this episode, we've heard it kind of back in the woods and stuff too. Like you have to be able to uh, abandon a part of your humanity in order to rise above the monsters or yeah. something thereabouts. So he keeps, he gives that line here and he says, I, you know, I believe, I believe Annie is able to do that. It, he's mm-hmm. like, I, I think she has that like inner, that like abandon to, to for abandon the sake everything. of her cause. Yeah. So it cuts back to, let's see The here. fight and yeah. Annie hardens her leg. I think, and then kicks Aaron's yeah, leg like, off, kicks right. in the face, and then he falls into the building, and she starts punching him, and and having a flashback and she, screaming. And she doesn't punch him; she's like hammer. Well, fisting. yeah, she yeah. she like, hardens her hand, yeah. and then starts and just, just wildly hammer fisting. And she's his skull. screaming, and she's screaming, yeah. yeah, which is every man's nightmare is to yeah. <laughs> so have, have a woman ah! over you, just like ah! with. Basically, she's bashing his skull in like you. Yeah, she jacks him up pretty good. So she basically beats him, like actually, Until like beats him see down. His skull. Um, yeah. Does the well? Let's see. I want to make sure I kind of get this in roughly the right order. So she beats him down. Um, that's when he loses a leg. She and goes an to arm, kick I him think. in the face, right? And that's when he like bites her or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. And I then get she his starts really bashing his head. Okay. So. Right about this time is, I think, when we start to get the first of the flashbacks, and there are several of these. Yes. So what we've decided to do is to try and make more sense of these, and we actually, so we're going to talk about Annie's flashbacks as as though they were one, because you, even though they're kind of cut, they're cut throughout the fight, like it'll kind of go back to it, yeah, you know, intermingled as as they are want to do in anime, but we're going to talk about them kind of all together, because it does build an interesting picture and a question that, just to be frank with you, doesn't really... If you're hoping for this one to get answered anytime soon, it's it's it is not yet. If you're a first timer, this this flashback introduces questions that we don't know the answer to. One so day. all speculation at this point. Aaron does get one good hit in, I think, before she starts. Like he Yeah, she, well, he yeah. bites her. Before that though, I think he hits her in the head once and then falls to the ground. She was a bit bitey. And then she tries to kick him and then he bites her. Yeah, he becomes a black knight, goes bites the legs. <laughs> yeah. So she starts to have the flashback, and the first cut that we see is um, Annie. She looks like herself, maybe a younger version of herself, like a twelve-year-old ish. And she's like looking at like the she's look, she's being held by a dark-faced man. We don't see his face; we see him like from behind. Eventually, we see his face, but he's just like kind of you don't even he's really like see a silhouette. Over and yeah, sort of like a shadowy face. And she sees herself in her reflection. She looks sort of like stunned, like she doesn't have anything to say. And um, she, you know, she looks, looks traumatized. Kind of, she looks traumatized, and she is not sharing the embrace with the man. Her arms are kind of like down. She's almost kind of like limp. Yeah. In his like, while he's like hugging her, so it's like she doesn't know how to process what's happening. Yeah. So he's like crying, and sells her a few things. One of which, depending on. Whether you're watching Crunchyroll or Netflix, <laughs> one of which is your, your dad is always on your side. Though the Crunchyroll one said, um, "Your dad's the only, the only one, one by on your side. side." Yeah, the only one on your side. So, anyway, so he's like kind of crying and so on and so forth. So we get like the first cut. We see like Annie, and then the next flashback we get to see like the dad again. We don't really see. Well, we assume it's, assume it's her dad because he does. He calls her daughter. Um, so he's crying. 
Um, hang on. Flashback again. Sorry, I want to make sure I get all these She's, in the right place. Yeah. I've got it all written down. You want to read it? Yeah, just go for it. Okay. Annie, your father is always on your side. Annie was wrong of me. I won't ask for your forgiveness now. But all I ask of you is one thing. Even if the whole world turns against you, it's okay. Even if the entire world ends up hating you, just know that your dad is always on your side. So promise me, you'll come back. So, some kind of interesting and ominous words here from old dad, yeah. from old pa. Um, so, Annie this whole time has been the stoic warrior. And we assume motivated by whatever her mission or whatever, however her, whoever she's doing espionage and the dirty work for, she's motivated by that. And what we, the viewer, get a glimpse of here is that there's actually a different motivation going on. And, you know, as far as we can tell, she's not been back. Whoever, you know, the, her dad or when, whenever this moment was, like, promise me that you'll come back. That must have actually meant something to her. And so mm -hmm. kind of the, like, one of the underlying themes that's going on in this episode is, you know, when Aaron was talking to her earlier, he's like, you know, I, you always act like nothing matters, you know, but basically I thought you were a bad liar. I've seen you come alive like in combat. Like I know, yeah. I know there's something else going something on. Matters What's your motivation? Yeah. yeah. What um, is your motivation? Armin even asks, um, why, why are you able to put everything else basically like aside and rot, like go, go to the, the, go the to monster, the extreme yeah, go to the extreme, risk it all. I think it's interesting in the Crunchyroll um, interpretation the line is changed slightly and it says, even if you make the whole world your enemy, yeah, sacrifice yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot of conviction, obviously, from her dad. And he's charged her with one thing. Get back. Come mm -hmm. back to me. Yeah, and, and it looks like she's wearing combat gear. She's wearing like a jacket. She's not, I don't know, it's not quite this like scout uniform or anything, obviously. This seems like it was long before that, but... Like, she's definitely, like, the assumption is she's getting sent off to war. She's getting sent off to do the damage that we've seen her do already. Like, yeah. that she's on some kind of mission, you know, from where and for why and all those things are yet to be answered, but that that's, like, kind of where she's come from. And does it talk about her dad training her at all? Because remember, we earlier. had that flashback. There's a flashback. Earlier, it hasn't like, anything. She has a dream about, yeah, training with that same fi shadowy male figure. Yeah. yeah. So she has a dream. Says, so I expect nothing less of my daughter. Yeah. So in that one, it's like it's yeah him being really like stern and like disciplined and so on and so forth. But in yeah. this one, it's him being like emotional and like you know please like basically please come back to me. Like I can't. I have no time to ask for your forgiveness now. But like come back to me. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're starting to see like oh wait a second Annie, you do she have seems a heart to be fighting for someone. That, yeah. You murderous savage. All of Titan. these things that you've been doing that are incredibly terrible, killing all your comrades. Yeah. Why? Well, you've been doing it apparently so you could get back to your dad. To your dad. Is that your motivation? Is that why you've been doing what you've been doing? But why kill? Why attack us? Why do all these things? What is that purpose? That we don't know, but we know she doesn't want to get caught. Mm -hmm. She allowed herself to be eaten by Titans so she wouldn't get caught. She allowed herself to you know get crazy shot up and you know fight so she wouldn't get caught she escaped twice from being caught and now she's, she's risking it again she's risking going it all, all just so she won't get caught she's running from Aaron right so she knocked him down he's a bloody beaten corpse of a titan he's got you know? like three limbs missing some brain His showing skull is bashed in and then we zoom into Aaron and then she inside starts his running titan Self skin, his Titan flesh in the control in the control room. Yeah, you the can, control. Yeah. Back see the like his, the his face, on like and the like, bottom half of his mouth. Oh no, Aaron, are you okay? Oh, Aaron's okay. And his he's eyes smiling, start glowing, and, and he's, he's drooling. Yeah, he starts salivating. And and Aaron stuff. goes full rage mode, and and as she's as he's doing this, you know, Mikasa's running to the wall, and and Hanji says she intends to climb the wall, right? And she, uh, being the female Titan, intends. Yeah, and Aaron just goes. Full, like rage red. Gonna, I don't know. Glowing. Well, he says his vow. He says, "I'm gonna destroy." I'm gonna kill every last one. All the Titans. I'm gonna kill all the Titans. And he starts drooling. And he starts drooling. And then he 
like zombie limps with a few like nubs and whatever faster than spider monkey faster than she can run she can run lava in his veins yeah two he's got two limbs he can crawl extremely fast fast enough to catch up to her with like full on rage eyes glowing and we've we've noted this because yeah the the whatever is happening to his like skin here is unique that doesn't i don't None i can't of think other... of another time where like in the future at least up to season three where that's happened again so that's why I'm noticing it now because it is different. This is not like a normal Aaron and Titan form thing. Yeah. But he has like, yeah, the fire in his veins or lava type of Flames thing. Flames come out of his gets skin. gets insanely fast and strong and crazy. And he's like crawling on his nubs. <laughs> and he catches up with her. He tackles her before and she gets to the wall. He gets an arm around her throat. Her back. Lands down, grabs her face, rips her face off. Like squeezes he it. Pops her like a like, grape, dude. The, wor- the world's like strongest headlock basically, but with and his hand. That's when Mikasa's like gonna go and Hanje says, I don't think he'll recognize you right now. Yeah, I don't think he can control himself. You need to chill out because Aaron so she is hesitates. N- another level crazy right now. And he says, uh, was this where he says, I'll destroy the entire world? Not yet. No, okay. that's, that's right after, when he rips her That's down. after Mikasa and him get her Okay, again. so... So then she's able to kind of spin, get up. She then hardens her fingers. Yeah, she gets the claw things. And the as female titan starts stabbing into the wall and climbing up the wall to Aaron get away from her. Aaron grabs the bottoms of her legs and starts chewing on one of them. Bites so, off her leg. And I she didn't... kicks his face and it, and her de- leg. it detaches her other leg and she keeps crawling. So I noticed this this time through. That that kick, her little downward kick, because Aaron's like hanging on to her, like a, you know, like a kid, like your kids do when little when they're little kids yeah. and they want to hang around mom and dad's like yeah. feet and you Except walk around. Except he's also them. using his teeth, not yeah. just Except for, like, his hands. Way more violent and like <laughs> yeah, lots and bigger. Yeah, and kind of zombie. So she goes to like kick him off, and it actually shows there's a little. She does tighten her anything right there too. Like I just noticed yeah. on the back of her leg, she's got yeah. the like crystal like thing, and she like boom like kicks him off and her own leg so, on purpose, like a fox would gnaw its leg off to get out of a trap. Yes, that's. Horrifying, but true. Or 127 yes. hours. Um, yes. So, mm. so she mm-hmm. goes to climb, and I love the the imagery here because she has her her face is like broken, and she looks very distressed and like ugly as she's like climbing like, desperately face, to get and her away. Her eyes are all yeah. And then this is this is where Mikasa or no, sorry, yeah, yeah Mikasa, goes Mikasa to finish, flies right? in. Leave it because Hanje is like she's gonna get over the wall, and Mikasa's like I will stop her. So what a what a great. She Classic becomes anime a queen. moment here. Yeah, she becomes yes, queen for it, but sparkles in the sun for Mikasa. Like a diamond. <laughs> Every time you say it, I want to say know. the dumb line. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, like so she comes in and cuts the fingers off of of Vanny to get her to fall, and she has this extremely anime moment where, in slow motion, she sort of like jumps down on it to Annie's face. She goes, "Ani, wait, how do you say fall? I can't remember. Fall. I don't know what she says. But... I can't. Remember. She says in Japanese, of course, yeah, but yeah. fall." And then there's this kind of slow romantic. She like, gently it's, it's pushes if, on her forehead. It's as if she pushes her down and she does not fall down. And well, no, she like pushes off and like ODM gear. That's I don't not know. how gravity works, you guys. Her ODM gear takes her the opposite direction, so it looks like she's flying away. It offends all my sensibilities, it's but it's okay, also dude. a really cool moment. It's very artistic and beautiful, yes, in my opinion. Yes. And so uh, she so lands. She lands. And then Aaron zombie into crawls, the willing clutches <laughs> of a murderous <laughs> monster. <laughs> And then he tears off all her limbs, including her head. I didn't catch that the first few times. That her that head was he off? He ripped her head off. Yeah. It's like a wild chimp. He ripped off her arm, her leg. You like see her hand fly back and hit a building and her her head. Yeah. and it's He like, basically does to her head what she did to his head, but with his bare hands. Yeah. He's been told not to hit an unarmed woman before, but. So he took her arms armed. off. He just made it happen. He, now she's unarmed. So that's when he says. In this murderous rage. Yes. Well, yeah, he, he has her like in his grips, basically. I will destroy. His teeth even look pointy here, which yeah, they change. Which they become we're pointed. Not certain if that's a stylistic choice yeah. or if like there's a literal like I think it's I something think he happening actually to him. when he became fiery, I think they became sharp. Well, the reason I think that this has a you know this isn't just like kind of a figurative like anime artistic style choice is because the next thing he's about to do is to bite her out of the nape of the neck. So his teeth are like sharpened yeah. as if he's like ready to do this. And so, yeah, so he says, I'm going to destroy, or Aaron, yeah, he jumps on her with the pointy teeth, he punches her other arm off, so she's helpless, and he goes, I'm going to destroy the whole world. And he says, I'm free, <laughs> as he goes in. So creepy. And then we cut to Hanji, and she's like, um. He intends to eat 
her. He tends to eat her like the girl inside, not like yeah. the Titan, but to eat Annie. Earlier we were talking about how Aaron, oh, he's got, got, he's got control this time. Well, he lost control. You don't have I it no so. more. But he got he some sort Hulk of smash crazy mode. smash strength when he did, which enabled him to, you know, with Mikasa's help, win the fight. But, uh-oh, we needed you to capture her, not yeah, eat her. Not eat her. So I, we're, there's more on this one quick second. Have to draw attention to this. Remember, back in the woods, we, we've talked about this before, uh, the 57th expedition. Yep. While they're out there, when yep. he goes... To fight Annie that time, he kind of is also in like a weird like rage mode. Maybe not yep. quite the level he is now, but he mm-hmm. says, "I'm gonna eat you. I'm gonna tear you. Or sorry, I'm gonna tear you apart, and I'm gonna eat, eat you. you." Yeah, yeah. Which I've is never, a weird thing to say. I've never said that to anybody before in my life, and Mm-mm. I don't know if I will. But um, Aaron said it in the midst of his crazy murderous rage. So the reason I'm calling attention to that is because it's weird. Number one, <laughs> number two mm. is because. Uh, we know like the dumb titans they eat people yeah right? that is kind of like their whole goal they're motivated by like they want mm-hmm. to eat human beings yeah but so far as we can tell these smart ones these shifting ones ones like annie ones like aaron that they're not like they're not motivated in that same way they're not the dumb ones right they have intelligence there's something yeah. else going on we've they're, never they're... seen any eat a titan or eat a human we've never seen um the Aaron eat, eat, eat a human before, and yeah. we've never seen um, the armored titan or colossal titan. Yeah, they well, just I mean, just Annie eat did bite Aaron out of his body, in, but, but she didn't swallow him, him right. or chew him apart. Just put him in his she mouth, just held yeah. him in his in her mouth like a mother would hold a baby in their mouth, like a mother animal. So there's this weird impulse, and you kind of have to wonder, like, what is it about? Because that means that there must be some relation some between kind of Aaron's. Aaron being in a quote Titan form and mm. some connection between that and the actual just like the rest of the dumb Titans. Maybe, maybe not. Mm. But this like hunger for primal urge. Yeah. I wonder if that, that time you mentioned before, I I would want to go back and watch. Did he salivate like he did? I don't know. He was He's just drooling going this time. in rage mode. I'm just wondering he if, full if, if he mode. starts drooling when he wants to eat someone, it would be interesting. That's gross. Sorry, but so, I think the finesse with which he rips the flesh off of you just very, I don't know. It's just kind of, yeah. it's like he knows what he's doing. He rips the flesh off, exposes Annie yeah. in, the, in the nape. He looks at her and right as he's about to go take a bite, we see that last flashback yeah. from Annie. And it's her, her dad, dad yeah. says, come back to me. As he does, we see the screen go black, a single tear falls down, Mm -hmm. and the screen reveals as Annie's pulled out of the flesh and she's sitting there exposed, she's crying inside of her Titan. Yeah. Yeah. She does have emotion, and this this connection to her dad must be very real. And so, yeah. So Aaron goes to lean in to like eat her. Actually, this is, yeah, I think Picasso even, they cut to Picasso real quick. She's like, Aaron, no, like, don't do it. Yeah. And, uh, well, Levi's later. That's when the light appears, I think, right then. There's this bright light that comes from her. So he yeah, bright light comes from her. He leans down to like go to like eat her, pauses, and this crystal thing starts to form around her. You see it sort of like and go up. And then he her starts face. melting too. And they start to like, yeah, do like a weird Titan fusing and thing. And then someone, I think it's Armin says, They're fusing. What? Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? And uh again, Mikasa like doesn't know what to do. Luckily Levi, Levi shows comes up. In. One legged Levi. I know. All still she does than... is just yell, Aiden! <laughs> she doesn't do anything. Uh, One legged Levi is still better than like half of the MPs and like <laughs> the scouts. Cuts the back of the nape open, doesn't kill Aaron, pulls Aaron out and is like, You idiot, don't eat the witnesses, right? <laughs> Always he's be sassy Aiden. and has skill. Yeah, he's, got That's good why lines. he's my favorite. Yeah. So, uh, so Aaron lands, he's got the whole like Titan thing over his eyes, you know, the little like marks on him that he's just been freshly in a Titan. He's unconscious. He's unconscious, but Casa rushes over. They're kind of looking around and they look over and they see Annie there is now crystallized yeah. into this giant diamond. Their two Titans are kind of decaying away in They're the background, skeletons steaming away. In the background, and the yeah. only thing is left is this like nine foot crystal <laughs> it's like yeah. pointed at both ends yeah. too it's very interesting and we hear this clanging sound and the camera kind of zooms in and shows us that <laughs> Poor it's john john he's got his sword Adi! he's just losing Adi! he's breaking it into pieces he's busting his sword off on this crystal and he's screaming like you need to come out and you come need to pay for Wake what you've up. done right because this whole thing 
the whole planning of the 57th expedition, the the politics in the courtroom, the the whole charade. It was all, all to the get people who died on those missions. Answers. All the people who died. Yeah. All the people who sacrificed their life. All the people in the church inside the walls. They all died so we could get down to the bottom of what Titans are, where they came from, and why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. And Annie here has closed herself off, and she's like. I ain't giving you nothing. Ultimate poker face. She and John sucks. Is, John is all of us just, right now. Can I just say that she sucks? You may. You may. He says, get out here and pay for what you've done. Yeah. Hanji stops him and says. Oh, it's Levi. Oh, Levi. Yeah, we're not breaking through that, bro. Hanji says, get some stuff. We're going to pull this crystal underground. Yeah. We need to get her underground yeah. now just in case she pops back out. And this is where, so Hanji kind of ponders the question that sort of finishes out the episode here, which is, you know, if we can't get any answers out of her, like, what was all this, like, death and destruction for? And, like, is it, is it for nothing? Like, do we really do this and, and, and get nothing out of it? Um, and Levi... Levi kind of and Erwin have, like, a little conversation where they yeah. basically talk about that. But it's the great, like, anime thing, like, I guess we are, can't really call this a win. They yeah. can't walk up and like face each other. One has right. to walk past, like one step past. You not know? look at each other in Not the look eye. at him and just say, hey. And I've never talked to anyone like that because I like to look at people's <laughs> Where you faces. you walk almost and, past him and then talk to his back. Yeah, because then you have, yeah. Anyway, that's not how our ears are built or our eyes are built or whatever. But It's, it's like, are you trying to pretend you don't know each other and you're like incognito? Like, what are you even yeah. doing right cool now? Guy. The anime version of cool, cool guys don't look at explosions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But cool guys don't look at each other in the face when they when have they a conversation. Say, yeah, when they say tough lines, yeah. yeah. It's like, I guess we can't really call that a win, can we? So, Levi, go ahead. Oh, yeah, all right. So, Le- Levi says, yeah, I guess I guess this plan wasn't really uh, a success. And so, Erwin's like, well, one thing I can say is at least the, the scouts are probably in the clear for now. By like, the skin of our teeth. By the skin, skin of, of our, our teeth, teeth. We've, at least, we've at least proved our merit somehow that we've, yeah, no information, but this... And he says this later on too, but basically like this would have turned out even worse had we done nothing, yeah. which is true. Yeah. Or had she gotten completely away. Yeah. yeah. So they do have her, right? She's captured. She just isn't giving away the information that they were, that they were looking for. Um, so he mentions here, you know, let's see, is this where they go to the, the table, table yet? Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's the two very, scenes. There's one like, is um, Aaron in bed recovering and the room. other one is Erwin facing up to the music of what the tribunal yeah so let's do the Erwin thing really quick and we'll go to the Aaron in bed so so uh Erwin does go to go to the law so to speak he does go to like the higher Speaking ups to the governor and some other people and Pastor right Nick tape. is there two two church cultists are at the table yeah, yeah. they've got some pull which is weird to why me why do they got to call him pastor I don't know he's, he's a cult salty. leader did we did we call uh Koresh what Dave what was his name something Let's not get Cult Koresh. Koresh. The dude from, from Waco, the I don't know. They Branch always, Davidians thing. They always call themselves something but like, innocuous. Yeah, but like we don't call him a pastor. Yeah. <laughs> He's a cult leader. Yeah, it's true. Anyway. Well, anywho. Raja. Yeah, that. All right, so so he's at the table, and they're kind of questioning him and, and saying, you know, well, it doesn't look like Annie's going to give any you know, give any information soon. And he's like, he just goes, yep, you're right. And like, so all this is for nothing? And he's like, Maybe. And he pauses, right? Yeah, so they actually cut it right there. Um, what they end up finishing with, yeah, yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, let's just let's just talk through it. So, stupid anime. I want to talk through the episodes chronologically, but they like cut scenes back and forth. Back That's and confusing. Forth. They do it in movies and stuff too. It is. It does have like a good effect. It like helps you like feel the moment that the characters are in, but it's kind of dumb because it cuts up the information. Anyway, so Erwin's basically being like accused, and they're like, "How can we trust the scouts and so on and so forth?" And he's like, "Yeah." So the, the final question I ask him is like, is this, you consider this like a victory, like a win for humanity? And he actually says, yes. He mm-hmm. says, listen, you're right. All this death, all this, you know, for, for no information, all the destruction for no information. Like there's no, yeah. you know, he's, he's a no, no BS, no excuses kind of guy. And he's not giving any here. He says, but what we do, what we do have is now we know that there's others out there. We know she had accomplices. We know that like now we have basically enough information to start going after who, you know, who li- whatever likely other spies basically is what I'm trying yeah. to say. He basically goes on to say like we're on the hunt now. And now we can take the offensive. We can yeah. take the first step of humanity ever towards you know achieving uh, achieving like a real win basically on behalf of whoever mm-hmm. this enemy is. Who Erwin is still trying to figure that out. So I like I like Erwin mostly because of his honesty 
And I like Erwin because he's also, he's so uh, tactful. Even in his, even though he's blunt, he has tact. He has a sense of like, here's what I do share. Here's who I share it with. Like he knows who to trust. Yeah. One of the things he says while they're, while they're grilling him and he's like, no, I, this is under a bigger picture. And like, this yeah. is a loss, okay. but it also equates, this is a, this sets us up for success later. One of the things they ask him is like, why didn't you tell anyone else? Yeah. Okay, the real reason he can't tell That's anyone else. That's a stupid question, actually. But anyway, please continue. I mean, it kind of is, but like they're like, well, why didn't you? Why didn't you tell us, right? Why didn't we, we coordinate know? together to try to like, you know, help you? So he says something true, but he doesn't say the whole truth, and that's what I mean by tact. Yeah, he says it's because she likely has other accomplices, and we don't know who those people were. Like the only people we could tell about this plan were people who are really close to the vest, the absolute yeah. most trustworthy. Which is true. Those are the only people that, that were told. We'll actually find out. I'm not trying to spoil season two here, but we find out in the first episode of season two. like What's the, going on there? Not all the rest of the scouts and stuff like that know what the heck is going on. There's in, a need-to-know basis going on. Yeah. there's an, Just like there was during the expedition, there's you know limited information to limited people. And so he's basically... He says that that's his reason. He only tells people that he sure are not involved in her conspiracy. Yeah. Yes. Which is true. Yeah. Alternatively, another way to just phrase that same thing is that I ain't telling you guys because I think you're corrupt too. And for all I know, you might be in. They are corrupt. I don't trust y'all as far as I can throw you. Like, we have you seen your that. scouts? They can hard. They're supposed to be the top ten and top ten. They they froze when they saw Titans. My dudes went and fought. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, we got to say something here about you know the whole like you're saying the 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 the, the mood. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Hanji, uh, Levi. John, is it is it everything a failure? Is it all you know the, the, these top brass? This whole mission was a complete failure. Yeah, and I understand the sediment. The sediment was like we wanted, and we had the potential in this operation to get so much to get a captive who could actually speak, not just a titan, right? Yeah. Not just a titan. Somebody who we could get information from and we could actually learn some truths. That was the height of what was possible for accomplice. Yeah, and because we didn't get that, we think, oh, miss. And Irwin's like. No. And I, the whole time when I'm watching this, I'm like, no, you idiots. It's a step forward for humanity. <laughs> I'll tell you why this wasn't a failure. Because a failure would be to do nothing. All that's possible for evil to triumph is good men to do nothing. Mm-hmm. Which he, Erwin says that. If we, he tells him that. If we, if we saw that there was titans going around and we didn't do anything, that's a failure. If we tried to fight these titans and the titans completely killed all humanity, that's a failure. But you know what we did? We found out that there was a Titan within our midst. We isolated down, found out their identity, mm-hmm. tracked them, and were able to actually not just stop them from killing or spying or anything else, beat them, capture them, 100% alive. Now, we can't get any information. They're in a coma type thing. Yeah. That's a flipping win. Why? We took an enemy operative out. Yep. We got we one of them down. the flow of information to whoever else was, was, was speaking. Mm-hmm. And we showed, hey, guess what? We can hang with the best of them. Yep. To me, that's three, 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 for, three for three. Yes, we didn't get the ultimate goal, which was more information. Maybe we can get it down the line. But like Erwin says, this sets us up to begin to go us on the attack and not just on the defense. Yeah. We're going to show them what we're made of. And I'm like... Let's go. Yeah. Go give that speech. Erwin 2024. Give that speech. <laughs> I want to vote for this guy right now. Like, let's unite under us all together as humanity fighting back. Let's attack yeah. the Titans. He's like the only one with like the, the correct perspective, perspective essentially. Because, yeah. yeah, there's the emotion and the mood and the like in- initial like sense of failure because... I totally felt that way at first too before Pete gave his speech and explained things. We paused it. <laughs> I was like... That's such a hollow victory. It, it doesn't is, feel like we won. Dang it, you know. And okay, so uh, to again to put it in perspective, like it is a, there is a loss happening here. Every battle it's a, has a, it's a has victory a cost. and also a, a right, loss. But, <laughs> but like I said, Irwin's the only one with the perspective to see the actual mm-hmm. positives coming out of what looks like a net negative situation. And he does say the most important thing, which to me, which is like, listen, she would have knocked down the walls or done cr- some crazy stuff. Like you had a Titan shifting spy in your midst. You, you should be glad we caught her died. this early. Yeah, well, what who knows if she would have done? If she would have busted down, you know, the gate, gotten in, uh, all the way inside, in the wall and then what did she do? Kill yeah. the freaking all the higher ups. She was, she's got in on like a meeting or something as an MP and just shifted and just massive everybody. everybody. Yeah. Chaos. 
in the streets. What if the scouts weren't around? What if Aaron was out on the front wall? Yeah, what are the MPs going to do? They're unchecked useless. unchecked and could have killed everybody, right? Yeah. Good thing we were there, and that's why the scouts are still alive today, I believe. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, dang, we needed that. Okay, so kind of simultaneously, uh, it's cutting back and forth here, but it, we're going to talk about Aaron and his like recovery room. room. Yeah, yeah, he's in this little kind of... I almost said hospice, but hospice is where you go to die, right? Yeah. Okay, he's in the hospice. It's a recovery okay. room. Yeah. It's where you go after surgery Rehab. or something like that. Yeah. To recover from your trauma. And so, uh, and so Aaron wakes up and he's like, you know, I assume, like, where's Annie? And they're like, well, she's still stuck in that thing. Like, good job, bro. And, she's uh, like a rock. And uh, Armin says, you know, they're kind of commenting, like, wow, you know, she did this to like hide her information, which Jean says she got away. Yeah, she got away. And, uh, and sorry, Armin is the one who says, Aaron allowed that basically, yeah. didn't you? And he's like, he admits it. He's like, yeah, actually, like I froze when I saw her yeah. and you got to wonder. I mean, like, I, I don't know. I couldn't do it. He says, I couldn't do it. Why? I couldn't do it. Why? He saw the tears. He saw the tears. And I have to think that that is the reason that is the single reason is because Aaron is still in there. Even though he's in this weird rage mode, like monster he's mode, like, like he's about to eat her, he to actually the stops world. when he sees the human, when he sees somebody else, like Annie showing emotion. And he hesitates just long enough for her to pull this trick off, which technically- Sucks a little bit. This is his fault, you know what I mean? Like, but, it is. But, I, but here's the thing is, it's, it is and it isn't. Armin is like, you, you like, kind of let her do that. But also, the alternative was eat to her. To eat her. Yeah, that the doesn't get any information. <laughs> then, then she's- then Dead. you don't even ever have a hope. And what if you put her in your mouth, but she went full crystal in your mouth? Would Aaron be dead right now, too? I don't know. Who knows? Would he be rocked also? Now, the other thing their here bodies is, were fusing. You remember how Aaron didn't want to fight Annie, even being told, yeah, she's a feeble titan. He's like, no, 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 I can't. He could even transform. He was like so shooken up about it. Yeah. There's one more thing where Aaron sees Annie, sees the like vulnerability, and can't execute fully yeah and and you know armin says like look we're gonna have to like put away your humanity to become a monster do what has to be done and aaron's like i'm not quite ready to put aside all of my humanity yet you just gave me a revelation i'm saying i noticed that i just noticed that happened to you so (laughs) all right it's good stuff all right so so then someone comes in and and calls yeah, they call Armin and Armin John away. Armin and John to be questioned. And then the two... They go off and have their little moment. As they're walking, yeah. We see uh, a couple of ducks. Oh, yeah. Well, John is like talking about how... Is that really the price that we have to pay to win? Is to give up our humanity and to rise above the monsters? And he says, yeah, even if Aaron was to... Is that really a victory if Even we if do he that? was to kill all the Titans, like, would that even really help us if we just become monsters? Yeah. And Armin looks up and he sees... The birds. birds flying over the wall, Re- you know, full circle. Episode one. The first thing we see is birds. Freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If we can fight, and if we can have freedom to be able to go up beyond the walls, to be able to live on our own terms, I'd rather f- you know fight, standing up and die than live on my knees. Yeah. In, as cattle, so mm-hmm. it's a kind of a cool full yeah. circle moment. Like Armin's. And the like, birds yeah. literally like they zoom in on close to them and they literally fly over the wall over and fly the wall. away. It's beautiful. It's amazing. So they have their little moment, and we cut back to... Well, um, that's also when Armin says he thinks that Aaron can do it. Yes. That's important. Which is a connection to earlier, because earlier he said about Annie, I think Annie Annie, is capable mm -hmm. of doing that. And then now he says, I think Aaron can do it too. And John almost seems surprised by that. He And he's like, what? And then you see him pondering it Mm -hmm. as they walk. So yeah, John's definitely had a hard time with his own emotions this whole season. So <laughs> I'm sure guy. he's like, dang, Aaron can just go. I mean, know. even though Aaron's not his favorite, I don't know if he really wants to watch Aaron lose his humanity and become a monster just for humanity to win. Yeah. I think deep down, even though they're kind of rivals, yeah. John respects him and cares about him. Well, he's his, yeah. he's his um, comrade, he's a, he's you his, know? Yeah. yeah. So then we go back to the, the care Recovery room. recovery room. Yeah. Can't, I can't say. I can't do it. It's I don't okay, know what bro. to call it. So we go back to the recovery room. Um, it's Aaron and Mikasa are there, mm-hmm. and typical. And Aaron says and some the purple weird crap. Flowers. Yeah, the purple flowers. Aaron says some weird crap. He says, you know, I kind of like liked it actually. And yeah, in the in the in the Netflix version, he says, like when my body was coming apart, like it felt good, uh-huh. and it's like 
Okay, what the f- what? that's some strange that's stuff. Weird. But in the Crunchyroll version, he says, when I was getting my face beat in. Yeah. It, felt it felt good to good. get beat up. I'm like, is this some Fight Club stuff And then on? he <laughs> says, I was even ready to die. And I wanted to, or something yeah, along like, those lines. I wanted to, I wanted to, I was willing to yeah, die. I felt like I wanted to die. I and was then, ready to die. And Mikasa's like, <laughs> she like freaks out of those. Like, Aaron, you know, like, no. not now, gosh. I don't geez. feel that way now. And then. She grabs his hands and says, and I'm glad you came back. <laughs> gently weeps. Yeah. This is the closest she, she comes to professing her, her love. And Eric just kind of says to her, like, I, I don't know what to do with this right now. Awkward. Yeah. He's such a dude. He's such a young young dude. Anyway, so the episode finishes with, I mean, we kind of already went over this, but the episode finishes with uh, with Erwin giving his line about, you know, we have great potential for human survival. You know, we now know so much more. And then they they leave out the episode you know zooming in on aaron with the key hanging around his neck Mm -hmm. and it's like all right we know where we're headed still we're headed for the basement some obstacles will will rise yes well very quickly as soon as you get to season two (laughs) the last line that he says that everyone says is we need to or we will attack the titans we're we're going to attack the titans we have an opportunity now to attack the titans even the ones within our walls and that that's how they end it yeah well, how they end it. Did you know? That but if you watch literally... the credits and keep rolling, you, which I don't well, know. That's if Netflix, how they end like, the dialogue. Yeah. I don't know if all the streaming services do that thing where like in between seasons, they still just boot you to the next episode. Don't let you finish the credits. I don't know. But if you skip this. If you skip it, don't. Go back and watch this scene. Dang it. This thing blew my mind because I mean, for, we for me. We all screamed the first time. Yeah. For me, I watched this by myself all the way through. <laughs> And there was no next season to skip to. Mm-mm. It was just the end of season one. And here I was left with the panoramic shot that slowly zooms into the wall of destruction where Annie was climbing up as a claw hole. And we see a little bit of rubble fall away. And there is the Muscly. face of a Titan. And you just go, what? It just Titans Why? are the walls? And I feel like Stoiland Green is people. Like just <laughs> my mind. Like, just you make a weird hand and you stick it up in the air and you scream and... It just, yeah, so for like a year and a half, I had to sit with that, you know? I'm like, <laughs> that image burned into your mind, like, what? Sure, it works the next day. Are you right there? There's like, literally no. titans in There's the wall. In the wall. Literally in. Inside the wall. And this is a big one. Is a real big one. We, we assume we it don't... looks like it goes, it looks like the camera pans up to near the top of the wall. Right. Which is crazy. So it was a crazy season. I was in Excellent. denial about that for a yeah, while. Thank God we can immediately go right to season two and yeah, continue you're our story. You listening to this right now? Yeah. You don't have to wait. The it's our parents' time. equivalent of uh, watching Star Wars, you know, back in the day when yeah. it first came out. <laughs> we had to wait years. I'm like, I had to suffer. Okay, I couldn't stream season two of Attack on Titan. I had to sit with knowing there was Titans in the walls. I couldn't tell anybody about it. You know, so. maybe our podcast will help turn Attack on Titan into this generation of Star Wars. You never know. I suppose it can happen. That'd be Though, cool. It's unlikely. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. You who are first timers, you are now being warned that we are about to get into some the spoiler, spoiler section. For those of you who want to stick around for that, please do. Um, make sure you st- <laughs> make sure you go to Sorry. YouTube. Find us on YouTube. You can watch all of the episodes for free there, of course, and on Facebook. We do stream live on Sunday nights. Uh, usually around eight ish, nine ish Pacific time. Depends. It's hard to dial in as exact time sometimes. But anyway, uh, yeah, join us over on YouTube. We are pushing out some other content that's not just the full like episodes. We got some some clips and a little bit of a little funny funny that's coming out. And we oh, are planning to also do like a uh, a little recap of season one to kind of help connect all the dots. So I feel like that'll be useful for people who don't want to go through hours of content but want to. Get yeah. a, a refresher. So Get her done. Um, we will be doing all that over there. Yeah, follow us, like the page, all that jazz. Email us, us all the cool things with questions, comments, concerns, ideas, theories, memes. Beyond memes. the basement at the com- wait wait the complete attack on no Titan. beyond no. the basement podcast beyond the basement podcast. I don't at, know why I'm I bring part of this too. Beyond the basement podcast break. podcast at gmail dot com. Yeah. You can email us there. Um, with Thanks that, for sticking with us. <laughs> we bid you non-spoiler people adieu. Good night. And I'm going to count down from three, and you better have your phone out of your pocket and ready because I'm going to spoil there. something like immediately. Rotten Press milk. that pause button. Any second. Hey, Cottage three. Cheese. Two. <laughs> One point five. Up. Oh.
One point two five. Pete's sleeves have been. Wait, what? The, oh, okay. That Can sound that? scared yeah, me dude. slightly. Do what you want. I don't. That's gonna hurt. Okay. Um. <laughs> one. All right. All right. We've counted down. Oh. Yep. All right. That was the thanks, oh 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 it's in your water <laughs> get it out of there thanks for thanks for that okay so spoiler all right so the first spoiler again just going through the episode chron- chronologically because this is how I have them written down is Pastor Nick excuse my French but that scumbag. bastard like he knows he freaking knows okay we're gonna go much much deep into this much deep so much deep so much, much deep into much this deep. very good <laughs> very good frankly the best huge it's it's gonna be huge um he's <laughs> he's such a jerk dude he's in there like with all his people and okay actually can we just your comment was it you about their linking arms it's my it was, was, it was yeah. pete it's all right tell me there was three rings of people that was my comment there are three rings of people representing the three walls. In the church. In the church. All the people, they're like worshiping and saying a prayer, and they're all interlinked arms. Like this. And they're praying for the divinity of the walls, but there's three ro- rows of them. You're like, oh, they're kind of like just symbolizing the walls. And I'm like, what if... What if they are lined up... The same way the dumb titans yeah. were that became In the walls. Rings. So what if like behind the like, you know, scaly, like stone looking part of the wall are all the titans and they're linked in arms like, like that? How do they, they have know that? Like that? I mean, like, I guess assume the theory is true, but yeah. How does Nick know that? Again, we go into it in kind of reminds next episode. Kind of is reminiscent of like those um those Japanese like uh, soldiers, stone soldiers that were all buried and yeah, they, they un- unbury the one. And he's pointing, and there's like he goes the next one, and they're all pointing. And it's like it all is a giant crazy thing. Yeah. And we can say now that the the face is up high, like it doesn't just look like it. It's it is yeah. the top and it hole looks like that it's crumbles a titan away, shifter. and it's huge. It does, and it, it has the muscly face. It has a muscly, yeah, like the colossal no titan. Yeah. It has no skin. Um, yeah. Also, I think it's interesting that they were saying the walls of light, and yeah. light yeah. is what gives the titans their ability to move. Yeah. Well, just like the kind of religious aspect of it in general. Again, like they shouldn't know anything, but like it was a quote, you know, demon and Ymir and like that, the whole like legend and, and whatever, like how the Titans actually were formed and all that stuff. Like it is a weird spiritual kind of like thing, actually. Yeah. It's also, like, when the Titans change, they, there's lightning. Yeah, there's lightning. And then Annie produces light and when she becomes light, the, yeah, the blue the crystal thing. The crystal, light comes yeah. out of her. There's li- light obviously has something to do with this. Um, which is weird and interesting and, and well it's not just light though it's light and it's like heat and it's air because remember Hanje says like they don't weigh what they should yeah it's like elemental in some fashion it's like I forget we're in spoilers I don't know it's like there's some sort of you know the the steam that they like dissipate into the it's like they're made of water off. it's like they're made of water and light and air and heat yeah mm-hmm. they're made of elements instead of being made of like flesh and but there's like there's bones inside there's of bones them. and blood and all kinds of stuff that yeah. happens how come it's they all, can't have any skin it's very weird well i mean aaron has skin yeah. some of them have skin and some yeah. i mean that's true the titan, dumb titans have skin Beast Titan has fur yeah he's like so y'all y'all are basic you got, got <laughs> muscles 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 skin i still skin can't get fur. over how <laughs> casually they introduce him yeah. like hey there's it's a the beast titan. What's the up? Best. So going back what? to Annie's dad. Yeah. All right. So so now we can speak freely. Annie's dad. We know he's outside the walls. We know he's Marley. He's got to be. Yeah, he's got to be. She well, was part of the mission. He might be Eldian, but he's in Marley. He's in Marley. This scene is happening in Marley somewhere. and Before is, they were sent on their mission. Before they were sent on their yeah. mission. So that's the assumption is that this is actually right before this is right before she gets sent on the mission with the it's other at, he's three. He's saying goodbye to her. It sure seems that way. Yes. Yeah, and like I just think it, I think it makes sense because in the first flashback, it's him like training her, and that that flashback is supposed to tell us something about Annie as a as a skilled warrior from childhood. And then the next flashback, it's almost like, I, I, I'm always on your side. Like I don't know, like. I don't know if I meant to send you off to war. Now, now that it's becoming yeah. a reality, he's yeah. like panicked over. That's it. what it appears to be. It appears like. Now we don't know all the all the story and details, but there's something similar to this that we're gonna just can you know project. What? What if her dad was the one with the power and she had to eat her dad like Aaron had to eat his dad? Yeah, I totally was wondering that. Like, 
or whatever this scene is is right after she just had to eat somebody and eat she's her mom traumatized. Or yeah. Or her. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Because where is her mom? Because he can't. Because she can't come back to him if he's if she's it, eating him. Yeah. <laughs> if he's dead. He, but yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking weird. along the lines of she ate someone she loved and she's traumatized and he knew that that was the price for her to become what she became, I don't, I don't which is why he would say, I don't have the right to ask you to forgive me. I don't but know if he knew, though, that I because love you. he seems so keen at first to send her off. Like, that's my daughter, right? And like, I, the, to me, like the theme is like, we're doing what we're doing because I believe it's right and because we're going to please the Marlians. If we please the Marlians, they'll treat us better. And if we do everything, they say, if you become a good warrior, it's going to be really good for us. And then he realizes the price and he says, oh no, I pushed you into like being a warrior and now they're going to take you away from me and they're mm. going to send you to go kill Eldians as you're 12. I didn't have the right to ask you for forgiveness, but please just come back to me. Like I'll make yeah. it better if we all come back mm. together. Dang. I don't know, man. Yeah, we don't know, but that's some good theories. <sighs> we'll find out season four, the trailer had the crystal. They better freaking tell us what a bunch of jerks they would be to be like, just leave it like she just, just in there stays forever. a rock never, for the yeah. rest of the show, just, and that's it. And yeah. just Annie's Nothing final middle finger make, to everyone. I like, make, I'm a rock forever. Peace out. Like, there's that scene where Aaron wakes up and he's like, "Is Annie still in the crystal?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I want to, I want to freeze frame that and make it a meme. And be like, season one, season two, season three. Yeah, <laughs> is Annie still in the crystal? Yeah, yeah, yeah she <laughs> yes. is. Yeah, forever, forever." I wonder if they're ever going to get to the Aaron's realization of where his dad is. I'm sure. Because it's like, why has no one thought of that He's yet? going to let the memories guide him. Yeah. You know, I actually wondered that, like, watching this the first time through with, like, Daniel and stuff like that, I was like, where's the where's his, where's his dad? And then I eventually kind of, like, in my head sort of was like, no, dad's dead. Because you don't see him. But I was like, but they never even talk about him. They yeah. never even go. Yeah. They don't Aaron explain where goes, he is. Like, I need to go find my dad. Why doesn't he? I don't know. Yeah. yeah there's not it's that, very like, strange. He's that not constantly looking for his dad. It's like he in knows. the very, very beginning, um, I think Armin and Mikas and him talk about, like, where did he even go? Where is he? Is he still alive? And then they never mention it again. Yeah. Not once. And then as the story unfolds, it's like, we're just not going to speak of that. At some, I think at some level he knows. And again, remember, perhaps what, the, I'm sure Armin has figured it out. Yeah, probably. Armin's like, oh yeah, by the but way, but he's just he not going to say, by the way, you ate your own dad because like, his dad left before the attack happened. Yeah, his dad was out of town. As far as we know, they've never seen. They've his just dad. been separate. Yeah, as far as he knows, he's like, oh, we've just been separated. I mean, he did. Eat, we know he ate his dad, but why doesn't he wonder? Why doesn't? How do they Mikasa not connect go, these dots? Because Mikasa, because Grisha Yeager is basically is part of the reason Mikasa's like alive and was adopted into the family. Yeah, like true. you think she'd have an attachment there too, but she never even brings it up. She seems to only have cared about Aaron's mom. And Aaron. And Aaron. She only cares. About I think Aaron. on some level he knows, and I think just like Grisha said, when you know the memory, the memory, or sorry, when things get hard, let the memories guide you. I think he's gonna remember, like, oh yeah, that's some trauma I'm gonna need to work out later. Yeah, you know? <laughs> for real. So okay. Can we jump? Oh, which one are you going to go to? Fire healing thing? The fire, the fire in his veins? In the theory. There is another time, by the way, where we see the fire veins. There is? When him and, and it, uh, Reiner fight, and he's like punching Reiner's armor off of his face, he gets fiery veins then too. Does Not the say, rainbow healing thing. Does he say, that happens too. They does both he say happen. crazy, salacious things I don't like, remember that. I don't everyone. remember the details, but Destroy I do remember world. that there is another time where we see the fire veins and like, he gets hot and he, yeah. Okay, why don't you go to yours because I'm going to go to mine after that and mine's the demon theory. Okay, yeah. All right, I'll do this first. Okay, so Aaron, so Aaron is going to eat uh, Annie, right? And he's he's he says the weird crap like, A, the fact that he wants to eat her at all tells me right. that he has the instinct to gain more power. And the reason I think he has that instinct is because he has the founding titan power in there. I think there is something about having the founding titan that, that makes actually- makes you a psycho. That makes you a little psychopathic, obviously. They- human memories but i'm saying like yeah. i think when that kind of gets activated in him he wants to eat he wants to gain all the powers right he wants the power all the powers of you are like back like in himself like there's like that's what the quote founding titan like desires one again aaron doesn't know to eat somebody it's like this weird instinct we see it in the woods because he says i'm gonna eat you and then we see it here we actually goes to eat her and it's only stopped by the fact that he's just conscious enough to be like mm, this is a person like that i know and maybe i shouldn't maybe I shouldn't. she's crying he like has most a little... guys are paralyzed by crying girls let's be honest yeah that's true it's true so um 
Yeah, basically what I'm saying is that this this all connects to me because I think the fiery vein thing has to do with the founding titan power that he possesses. I think that the desire to eat, uh, to gain more power, and the fiery veins, like, his, like, kind of incredible, like, moment, his moment of power here is something to do with the founding titan, which I'm still not certain, translation-wise, if you are a Japanese speaker, please email us, is founding titan and the coordinate... Are these one and the same? Because they refer to Aaron as, quote, the coordinate. Do they mean the one who has the founding titan power or the one who has the attack titan power? Is this possible? I think probable that they don't know he has both of them. Or is I think the, so, too. Is the coordinate something think. different than all of that? Is it just that ability to control the titans? Maybe. And, you know, we talked about how Beast Titan is able to speak to the titans mm-hmm. and he's and able he to call, call hordes them. of them. Mm-hmm. And the founding titan could at some point control them because he's able to control them all to make the walls, right? Yeah. So we think there's something could be the royal bloodline, could be something to do with um, you know, certain Titan powers, but also the specific coordinate for sure has that ability to control Titans and that's insanely po- uh, powerful. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm, that's, yeah, this is all my going theory that like you possess the Titan power, but it kind of possesses you too. Like, because you have all the memories, like, that's part of the reason you, like, do weird crap. And that, like, it's hard to see this entire show ending without Aaron dying. Like, I'm sorry. Oh, but, like, he's going to die. It just seems like yeah. the most probable thing. So that kind of goes right into the demon theory, right? right it's something me. that we saw for the first time this watch through. Something that, like, we kind of were like, oh, that's weird, but, like, kind of wrote it off. But this watch through, specifically this part when Aaron goes, like, full rage mode. And we've seen him go, like, pretty crazy rage he mode before. come over, yeah. Overcome by a demon of rage. Yeah, there was something that happened when he saw his mother die. He was on the boat, and it's almost like the uh, Ackerman, like a power deep inside of him awakened. Um, he was standing on the boat, and he saw the Titans, and everyone else is crying. And he, in his heart of hearts, made a vow: "I'm going to kill all the Titans." And that like awoke something like deep mm. and dark, right? Yeah. So when he did that, later on. He then has the means to enact that. He makes some kind of pact with this like Titan power. As when he eats his dad, he gets the Titan power, right? Mm-hmm. He has the like, Titan blood inside of him. And that is what fuels all of his strength. He's the most strong when he's absolutely insane, right? Yeah. When he's filled with rage, he wants to kill. He says crazy things like, I'm going to chop her to pieces. I'm going to bite her. I'm going to eat her, right? Well, yeah, I think that's the founding Titan thing kind of in him or whatever speaking when he says, specifically when he says, I'm going to destroy the whole world. Yes. Why so would you say that unless... That's a strange thing to say. The whole world was made of Titans. Period. He, first, you're like, I'm going to kill a Titan. Like, yeah, let's do it. Then he's All like, the I'm going to eat you. We're like, that's weird. Okay, we'll, we'll allow it. Then he's like, I'm going to kill the whole world. We're like, no, nah, bro. Let's, let's stop there. And then he says, I'm free. And that to me is like, okay. Something has pause. been caged and it's free now. The original theory that they've talked about in uh, uh, seasons one, two, and three is that the Ymir, the founder, the first Titan power person, and it looks like in season four, we're going to find out, made a deal with the devil, somebody from inside the earth to unlock these Titan powers. What if the Titan powers aren't a power, it's a curse? What if she sold her soul to the devil? That's why they only last 13 years or whatever mm-hmm. it is to get possessed by this power. And if you think about it, almost nobody uses the power for good. Almost all the people yeah. use the power. All the Marleans have used the power for corrupt, terrible yeah. war crimes. All the Eldians before them, it sounds like. Tried to use it to take over the take world Take over the also. world, killing and raping and pillaging, right? The Rice family uses it The Rice it for- family uses it for wickedness. Uh-huh. And it's like everyone, every ruler says, oh, I'm going to use it for good. But they don't. And it's like the it one ring. It corrupts them. It corrupts them. And so I think there's something that's like latching on to Aaron's like sickening desire to kill. And it's, it's like, like, oh yeah, the I'll symbiote. fuel. Exactly. The symbiote's like, I'll fuel off of that hate and rage uh-huh. and I'll... I'll like control you and then I'm going to become free. And then I'm when I'm free, I'm going to go full rage, all that red, all that whatever, all that power, and I'm going to take over and I'm going to kill everything because it's like this dark demonic power inside of him. So if that demo- demon theory... It definitely theory, seems very demonic. Yeah, and it seems... I Because mean, at know, first we're like, yeah, Aaron, be the Titan, be the Titan. And I'm like, oh, I don't want no part of that. He's like, bro. you know, yeah, crawling not. on his limbs and has literal fire coming out of his body and yeah. this crazy... Demonic so he's rage. A, he's accomplishing our purposes right now, but we don't want to like 
give up what we believe in yeah. to see it happen. So he obtains a lot more control as the yeah, season progresses. We don't see that ever kind of manifest as much as we did now. Mm-hmm. But I'm still worried, especially as he's unlocking more and more of his power. If at some point, Aaron. <laughs> Is going to become the villain of the show because he's going to you get. You just read my freaking mind. He's going to get all these he's powers. He's going to become corrupted by everything. The was, demon inside of him. I yeah. was literally about to say, what if this what show. What if Mikasa has to kill him? If you've ever seen this YouTube video, I think you showed it to me. Maybe, I can't remember, but there's a YouTube video where somebody breaks down Karate Kid <laughs> and they, they cut it in such a way to say that the bully is actually. Uh, uh, Daniel. Daniel Daniel's is actually side. the aggressor. He's actually the yeah. bully. The I've cr- seen that one um, where he's actually Johnny's the, the John, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Johnny, who's the villain and the, the, the antagonist yeah. in the film, is actually the good guy. And he's he's just minding his own business. And this Caruso kid shows up and freaking takes his girl and takes, beats him yeah, up and pranks him. And, yeah. and like when you watch this video, like there's two videos that are fairly convincing. There's the the Star Wars theory. There's a couple of Star Wars theory ones, and I'm like, oh, maybe that is real. And then this video, you watch it and you're like. You almost have me, actually. Like, I could almost see, like, remaking this film and just flipping the roles. Like, it's actually the antagonist is actually the hero. And, like, as soon as you started, like, you were, right before you said that, I was like, what if this whole time Aaron is actually the villain? Like, he's, like, the actual, What if the like, people in the walls really are evil and need to be contained? And I, I don't know. I'm see, I, It's here's possible. The thing. Listen, I they, can't they flip, root, flip you on your head so many times in this show. I can't root for the Marleyans because they're war criminals and they send children. 100%. And so I'm left right now rooting for the Aldeans, but I want them to be free. I want Armin's vision of the future. I want freedom. I want people to not be used as cattle and to not be trafficked and slaved. But if it comes to the price of everybody gathering all the powers into one person, Aaron, and Aaron killing himself or dying or whatever, to relinquish and set humanity free from the burden of this demon, that's a good ending for me. I'd be happy with that. I will cry we'll so much if that happens. What happens? How it goes. There will be tears. I want to see Mikasa and Aaron be I happy almost... for at least one freaking second, please. Well, they, they can know, be man. happy, but they can't be happy for longer than another seven years. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Or so. Yeah, exactly. They better they better get on that. They're gonna Poor have kids Mikasa, and stuff. Man, she's Which, just... What if Not Ymir fair. is end boss? The Ymir that we think is dead. That are you saying Ymir they like the actual? All the powers and Ymir. She demon, reincarnates. Like, comes back in something. That well, that's my theory. That I think that 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 happens in Aaron because he's already, he's already got two, and so that he, he like ends the... up like this is this is my theory is that the po- I mean, he, he has, has the founding titan. The, the founding titan <laughs> desires more power. Yeah. The Founding Titan now has the Attack Titan, which thus making whoever possesses both of those more powerful and perhaps more desirous. If Aaron gains a third power, a third Titan power in himself, and a fourth, who knows? Does that then increase the desire, increase to the eat power? The others. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because that would mean he would eat Armin. Remember too. what happens with the, the, the royalty when all the memories get unlocked? They don't do what they say they're going to do. They're like almost controlled by the spell. Yeah. And is that going to happen with Aaron when he gets more and more memories unlocked? He's also not royalty, which, so I can see so it going. break the curse? Exactly. I, like, I can see it going two ways because maybe the I curse is always kind of transferred from royal blood to royal blood. And That'd now someone cool. has it that's not royal. They've broken the pattern. Because he knows to be careful, right? Like at the end of season three, when he like touches Historia and he starts to get some of the Titan memories, like he actually goes, okay, I need to I'm like. I'm not going to use her. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to use her. So that I mean that he's still protecting his virtue, but. Just this this episode just told us that you have to abandon your humanity. Your rise above, rise monsters. above the monsters. So it's possible. I guess we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, it's been it's been good, folks. Um, thank you for joining us again. Email us beyond the basement podcast at gmail dot com. You can find us on YouTube and Facebook. Drop us a like, por favor. Yep. Drop a like on the Facebook page. Come watch us live. Honestly, like I would love for everybody to join in. Uh, we're gonna do our best to stream just like the second the Crunchyroll lets us have season four. It will be one hour. We'll after watch it. Released. Do some Q and A, maybe some discussion. Oh yeah, that'd play be some fun. games. Whatever you like. I'm gonna you know, cry. Can punch one of us. Sure. I can. I not know. Rachel. Dang. You make me punch girl. I'm not doing that. I mean, well, she's unarmed. <laughs> she's. You gotta rip her arms off. And... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, no. Well, none of us are misogynists, and I mm. love all of you, and I'm. And of nonviolence. Okay. With that said, we will see you in the next episode. Thanks again for watching and listening. If you're enjoying the show, you can leave us a five star review on Apple or Spotify. If you're really loving it and you want some extra cool content, you can join our Patreon page over at patreon.com 
slash beyond the basement podcast. Check the show notes or our social media pages for links to some really rad attack on Titan merch. All right, guys, see you next time.